all I heard from that whole thing is that the director that lives in your backyard extends his executive platinum no. privileges. <laughs> But I live in David Ridge's backyard and we fly together a lot. And I don't feel like I've ever benefited from this. And I'm trying so, to understand what is going on here. Yeah, so you might want to call him. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just how I take care of my peeps. Welcome back, Travel Advisors. This is episode 47 of Two BDMs and a Mic. My name is James Ayers. I'm the BDM in North Texas and Oklahoma, and joined always by my amazing co-host, Christy Konopaki. Christy, how are you? I'm mm, I'm great for a Monday. We had a loss this past weekend, but we're not going to talk about it because this isn't a sports podcast. It is a travel podcast. We're just going to brush all of that under the rug until next week. Listen, I'm a little confused because you live in Minnesota. Didn't you guys win? <laughs> Chad? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Minnesota, Christy, would you like to introduce our guest today? Very special episode. All the episodes are special, so this is just an extra special episode with the director of sales for the Midwest region, Chad Kruger. Welcome back. Like, I don't know, the fifth time, sixth time, seventh time. No, I, I appreciate it, but listen, if you guys you guys want viewership to keep increasing, I guess you just keep calling me back. That's what this is all about. See, Christy, I believe his actual introduction should have been the all-time view count leading director. How could I forget? Of all directors. Yeah. On anybody. You know. How could I forget? Actually, just all-time leading view count of anyone at Unique Vacations or Sandals Resorts. No pressure. <laughs> I'll remember that for the 10th episode when Chad comes on. How about that? Um, but no, we're very excited to have him on today. We have a fun packed little afternoon here for the advisors where we talk about something that's really going to help them just sell more sandals and beaches, right? I'm excited about this topic. Chad, are you ready? I, yeah, listen, I'm ready when you guys are. I mean, if you, if you haven't seen the last two episodes, we brought a couple of advisors on, and we're going to continue that next week. We have more advisors. We're not going to stop this series of, of trying to promote your business and get your business on track to close out the year, which is why we brought Chad in to kind of piggyback off the first two guests, and then we're going to bring in two more advisors as we close out this series. But I, th I think it's really important if you haven't watched those and you just want some ideas, remember every agency owner or advisor is going to think a little bit different, but just remember that they might spark an idea that you never thought of before just because they maybe mentioned something that they did. So you don't have to always agree with exactly everything that they said. That is how they do their business. But the idea is that the more you guys collaborate and stuff, you'll come up with your own ideas or maybe look into something that you never even thought to do before. So that being said, Chad, today's episode, I, you know what, Christy, I'm just going to turn it over to you and say the title because you made it very long and I can't remember it already. Something about <laughs> power and, and price and value and chat is the no greatest. Power. I think that no power in it, but that's okay. You, <laughs> you slightly got it correct. It's selling beyond the price tag and emphasizing value over price with Chad Kruger. Now, this is one of his infamous trainings. I've given this training where I actually just play a video of Chad speaking and I've gotten <laughs> phenomenal feedback from it. So I'm very excited for a crash course on this value over price trading, right? Yeah, listen, I, I can't go into all the details of it just because then, you know, then that kind of defeats my purpose and, and what I'm doing out there. But um, we have put, and this is something that I want everybody to know, like, this is just something I put together based on my, I don't know, I've been in sales now for 20 years, right? So my 20 years of experience on how to sell something that is typically an intangible item, right? So travel and vacations, they're, they're, they're intangible. It's not like somebody is buying a car and you get to drive away with it. So what you have to really do is build a lot of the value in that because you're selling an intangible item. You're selling a dream. You're selling a vacation. You're selling an experience that they might not do for six months to two to three years from now, but you're planting that seed now. So um, when I dive into it and I actually do this presentation, it can take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. 
Um, and it's a lot more visual, but listen, we're on a podcast, so it's it's hard to really dive into it. But hopefully just talking about the concepts of it will open up some ideas and shed some light, um, it, but give people some ideas just to think a little bit differently. But the main focus is just reach out to your business development managers if you want more of an in-depth training on things like this. This is something that we always can do. Um, and like Christy said, I, I have, I've recorded it myself. I, I've conducted it with uh, travel agencies and they seem to like it um, for 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 whatever the, for whatever reason I don't know I think it's maybe just me you know and and or whatever the topic may be but um, the biggest thing to remember is it's not about beating the competition right it's about being relevant it's being about being relevant in what people are looking for today it's about adaptability but um, the first thing really to just kind of pinpoint on is what is value selling itself right and in figuring out the ability to kind of de-emphasize price is the dominant force in the decision-making process, right? Because anybody comes into it and a lot of times for a travel advisor or anybody or whatever, it's what's your budget? What do you want to spend? Honestly, that that should be one of the last questions that we ask, even if it, not even a question we even we, we even bring up, because a lot of people, honestly, if you haven't worked with them in the past and don't really know what their spending habits are, most a lot of people have no idea what a vacation costs. They have no right. idea what a dream vacation or a bucket list trip costs. They might just throw out a number to you and say, "Oh, uh, this," but it doesn't really accomplish what they're looking for, right? Um, so on top of de-emphasizing price, you also want to show the clients that a higher price may provide a better solution to what they're actually looking for, right? Um, and being relevant, we talked about that. But a lot of times when it comes to higher priced items, this is this is where a client needs more of their needs solved. So as a professional and as a travel advisor, what we have to do is solve more of their needs other than just simply answer a bunch of questions, right? Which is hard to do, but it's, once again, it's the psychology behind how, so, you know, somebody's dominant buying motives, how they choose to make a purchase, how they, you know, understand just wanting to purchase something for themselves, right? Um, my biggest dominant buy, or some of big dominant buying motives. One is just people will purchase out of convenience, right? That's why we run per certain sales. That's why we we operate and run um, promotions that have an expiration period. It's, it's, it's a convenience thing. They want to indulge. They want to feel better. Who's ever purchased something just because they had a bad day and they wanted, you know, you know, something, of course, Christy's hands up right away. Right? <laughs> um, just she's like, that just happened yesterday after the Packer loss. Oh, no, that was last week when they lost. But trickles into that. Story. Anywho, not a sports podcast, travel podcast. So that's <laughs> one of the, some, you will just do something to feel better. Right. Some people will purchase something based off of prestige. Right. You will get clients that will purchase an over the water bungalow or an over the water villa because their friends didn't. And they want to be the ones that are staying in the nicest villa. Um, you will get another dominant buying motive of people that it's just it's it's a fear of loss or a hope for gain. Right. That's exactly right. Like with the 777 promotion that the BDMs put out there, there's a reason that there's a a countdown clock on, on that promotion. There's a reason why the website says it expires on Friday. But we all know it doesn't expire until Tuesday at midnight, and then a new one rolls out because people will look at that and, and want to make a snap decision because they don't want to lose out on a benefit, right? And that's why all of our promotions that we have running right now are phenomenal promotions with the free nights and, 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 and the bonuses and all that. That's all there for a reason. And the reason we end it is because what it does is it, it makes sure that the clients are going to be able to kind of take advantage of it. Um, and honestly, one of my favorite dominant buying motives is literally it's just reciproc reciprocity of guilt or just because you like the person that you're buying from right full disclosure i once bought a minivan because i liked the sales guy i didn't need a minivan but i was like all right listen i've got small kids <laughs> and listen i people don't look at me and think that guy drives a minivan but i i you but it was a sweet minivan. It was like a spaceship. I'm not going to lie. It was the coolest vehicle I've ever had. I just I just got to press buttons and open doors. But I literally purchased that minivan just because the sales guy, he was brand new. I knew he just wanted to sail. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll buy a minivan. I had it for like six months and I got rid of it. Took a massive loss on it. But whatever it is, what it is, we all move on. But I felt bad for the guy. So I, I But that's 
it was a it was a buying motive at that time that made me feel good about the purchase. So it's 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 understanding what our clients' dominant buying modes are, right? And really diving into what are they looking for. But once again, it's making sure that we're selling them an experience and not a vacation, right? They can book any vacation they want online. The reason we work with travel professionals, the reason we work with people that do this for a living is because we want them to be able to build an experience for their clients, right? It's, it's, it's pretty simple because it's, there's a lot more now involved with, you know, even looking at our product with experience in the island and the culture and dining off property and just everything that we've built into it. It's come so far than it was back in the, you know, even early 2000s when you just thought all inclusive was just booze and food and a place to sleep. So um, <laughs> that's kind of the, the experience you got to build a little bit. So, um, and my biggest thing to always remind everybody, mm-hmm. is everybody buys on emotion, but you justify it with logic. Plain and simple. Anything you do in life, there's an emotional attachment to it, right? Whether it's even purchasing a pen, okay? I'm buying this pen, for whatever reason, because I need it, but I'm going to justify it. Can I afford the pen? Do I really need the pen? You're always justifying it logically, but anything is an emotional purchase. And when it comes to vacations, that is a massive emotional purchase because there has to be a want to do it, but you also have to fill some needs as well too. So Chad, let me me jump in. I forgot we were hosting a podcast here and I wasn't just at your own (laughs) training, but let me jump in here. No, no, it's great. It's perfect. But let me jump here in, in here and, and ask you to kind of clarify something based on what you're talking about and how they build this out and how they get the value and prove that. And you talked about the car salesman and all that. How does an advisor take this type of value and incorporate it to last minute bookings and deals and sales? Sure. Like if, if you're trying to grow your business now. Listen, the last minute I hear, I hear a squeaking toy. I even have a dog and my dog. Is <laughs> my dog fire. is just going so nuts. Something right now some, trying to get my attention. <laughs> something is happening. Um, but listen, there's building, you can build value on last minute promotions as well too, right? Because it, it's, oh, look, listen, I know this is a podcast and not a lot of people watch on YouTube, which you should like follow and subscribe, but that's, that's ah, a cute little pup right there. Good so, plug, good plug. Um, Building, you know, there's value anywhere, anything that you're doing, right? And just because it's a last minute sale, what that's doing is that's ch- checking one of those boxes of a dominant buy motive of looking for a fear, loss, or hope for gain, right? Wanting the best deal possible. That's still, you can still want a good deal, but still sell the value over what the price is. Because what we have to do is build in what you're getting with that that vacation, right? I think oftentimes we always hear, oh, well, sandals is out of my budget or sandals is too expensive or beaches is out of my budget. But what we haven't done a good enough job at is building the value and what you actually get with a sandals or beaches vacation, right? Reminding them the inclusions for us. We know tips are included. Transfers are included. All the food, all the drinks, the land sports, the scuba diving, the snorkeling, the kayaking, all that's, we know that that's included, but the average person that's coming to stay with us have no idea so a lot of times, once again, if you hear that, oh, it's out of my budget or it's not or it's too expensive, we have to do a better job at educating the client on what mm-hmm. exactly they're getting with every single vacation and every single experience that's there. Now, kind of how that comes around is once again, when you look at the psychology, like, listen, I can go off on tangents. So if you want to stop me, just stop me. But I will tell you that the number one mistake salespeople make in selling is that they hope too much that people buy. Okay. Now, James, you kind of gave me a weird look. Christy's going, wow, you, you, this is opposite. What do you mean by hope too much? And, and and you're You're right because a lot of advisors say, oh, I really want to get these sales. Right. Listen, I've been in sales my whole life. Right. And, And one of the biggest reasons it's easy for me is I'm not dusted. I don't pretend to care if somebody doesn't purchase from me. I just don't, I I don't care. And the reason is because there's, there's the law of averages, right? You look at the law of averages, every sales, every TA that listens to this should know 
what their average is. And basically what the law of averages is, it says out of every X number of people I talk to, every about an X number of quotes I send out, every I get Y number of sales, right? And for everybody, that average is going to be different. And everybody should know what their number is because in order to grow your sales, all you have to do is grow your averages. You will not sell 100% of the quotes that go out. You will not sell 100% of the people that you talk to. And once you get over that fear of hearing no, okay, it, to me, it's not no, it's not now, right? It's I, I've still got you on the hook. I'm going to get you eventually, but it might not be this immediate sale. And once people actually understand that, you know what? It's okay to hear no. And out of 10 quotes, if I close three of them, that's my average. But if I really want to grow my business by utilizing 777, by utilizing uh, the, the last minute promotions, maybe I can get that three to go to four. And then down the road, get that my, you know, out of every out of four, go to five or six. That's how you have to think about it. And, and it's not that um, I don't care if somebody buys. It's just that I, I have an understanding that not everybody is going to, but the more people I can put myself in front of, the more quotes I can send out, the more times that if somebody asks to go to anywhere on the planet, I'm going to include a Sandals and Beaches quote, the more my sales are going to increase because what it's doing is it's sparking a, a conversation, right? And the number one way to be able to do that approach it is a term and it always gets me, but it's called pre-indoctrination. Okay. Now this is where the psychology of stuff comes. In. I know, I know. Listen, I know, you're I using big words. words, big, big words, words here, Chad. Pre-indoctrination is, is <laughs> about teaching your potential clients something about the results that they desire, even before presenting your product, your services, all of that stuff. So, right. So, so if you teach them about the results, if you go into the details of what their wants are, their wishes are, and you're doing all that by asking them questions, you're going to be able to present them the perfect offer. And you do that all up front without ever talking about price. Because right now, what you're doing is you're you're checking off every single box that they that they want in this dream. You're checking off every single box that they want in this experience that you're building for them. And then you get to the end and you can say, check, 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 check. These are all of the things. This is this is the dream package. This is why you've come to me. And then that's when you present them the price, right? By doing this and giving them all the information up front, you're creating credibility, you're creating trust, and you're making it more receptive to the solution that you've provided has met all of the needs that they've actually wanted on this vacation, right? So it, it, once again, it's kind of, it's shifting your mindset a little bit to ask them questions. They'll tell you, everybody will tell you exactly what they want and exactly what they want to spend, right? Now, my other analogy, I, 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 I purchased dumb minivans, right? <laughs> I've also per spent more on vehicles that I've wanted to because, listen, I went shopping for the wife. We bought a new car. And listen, once I knew that there was a big, huge screen in one of the cars, I could never look at another car that didn't have a huge flat screen TV in it. It's where they get I, you. I needed it until the salesman was like, hey, listen, these are all the boxes. And like, I, I need that in my car. So it's the same thing when it comes to a vacation. We have to build that for them so that they understand that everything they're telling us, we're going to provide that. But it might come with a little bit more of a price tag, but it's checking off all their boxes. And that's that's the tough part is, once again, getting rid of the price. Who cares about what it costs? If it's a perfect opportunity for them, People are going to pay the money for it. And that's that, That's what we got to realize. So I've got a question for you. Um, you talked about not asking for their budget. How would one get away from, you know, they've maybe done this for 10, 20 years, asking these clients for their budgets. How would one kind of shy away and start mm -hmm. a new process of figuring it out without saying up front, what's your budget? Sure. The simplest way is just stops asking it. Right. <laughs> um, just, right just we have to remove that from our vocabulary, right? It's the same, it's the same thing as, as, as if it's worked for you for the past 20 years, but maybe something's not working now, let's, let's do a switch. But I, I think once again, what it comes down to is just really, it's shifting our questions and it's, it's, it's letting them talk more, right? And really asking those second and third level questions on what exactly that the, the client is looking for. A lot of times we, the, the budget thing is a comfort thing for us because in our minds, we're going, 
well, oh, man, if I send this, I hope it's not too expensive. Or, or, but once again, if they don't buy my, my mentality, I don't care because I know the next person will. I know only 30 to 40% of the people are going to buy from me. This might be one of the ones that won't, but I can promise you I'm going to put together the best possible experience that they're going to get on vacation. And it might not be right for them right now, but I, I promise you they might save for it. Maybe they'll book it out a couple of years in advance and do a cheaper opportunity that, you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. But um, I think the biggest way is just, we have to, we have to change ourselves a little bit and, and remove that from our vocabulary. Because like I said, most people don't know what their budget is, right? I, 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 once I use a lot of analogies, I'm remodeling my kitchen. I don't know how much kitchen cupboards cost, right? But now I know, I know they're not cheap, but I know I need kitchen cabinets. So, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's checking all the boxes. So guess what? That's kind of what we have to roll with. So, you know, it's, it's, don't be afraid to sell a luxury item, right? And that's why we always talk to start with the Butler level, because listen, if you build this dream experience, right, there's things that we can do to still get them on a sandals or beaches vacation um, and have it be the vacation of their dreams without, you know, devaluing what we're offering, right? You start right. with the butler, you go through that. You know what? And listen, maybe it isn't affordable for them. Then you just go to the next level, okay? Then you go down to the, you know, then you go down to luxury, right? I would personally, I would package in spa services. I would package in Island Roots excursions. I would package in all that stuff. And if it's a little bit over their budget when they get down to the end of it, then you can start removing those things right? One of my favorite things to do is build in spa packages. And if the guy says, you know what, listen, it's just going to be too much of an expensive, then you say, listen, we'll get rid of the couple's massage. I promise you that couple's massage stays because he gets hit by the wife and she's like, we're not getting rid of the couple's <laughs> massage. You know, stop being so cheap. This is our vacation. It's the one time a year that we try to do something. Like, build that stuff in and have some fun with it. But it still gives you that opportunity that if you really needed to weed it down, you can weed it down. But if you start with just a room, just flights, entry level, you're not getting them all the way up to here, which up here might be the vacation that they were actually looking for in the first place. You know, Chad, I, I love when you talk about uh, starting high because one thing that before I, I worked for Sandals, even even I didn't really get the concept maybe until the last couple of years, but split stays are so perfect at Sandals Resorts, right? And because a lot of times you'll say, oh, let's put you in a butler suite and that client comes back and says, oh, that's way out of our budget. And you can go, oh, for the whole week, they're like, yeah, maybe a little bit less. And now you can start curating that, right? As the advisor, and that's where your values and advisor comes along because you can say, hey, why don't we do three nights in a butler? and four nights in a luxury room. And then we're gonna add in the spa package or do the Island Roots excursion. A lot of times people, they wanna give and give and give, but you this is where, to me, you really gotta feel out your client. If your client is someone that wants to go on an excursion every day and be out and about in the resort, do they really need the highest end butler room? Because they're never gonna be there. But you can, as an advisor, don't be like, oh, I wish they wanted more. Build out the vacation that, that is for them. You could end up, it could end up costing them more money or they spend more money by staying in a club level room and doing a bunch of Island roots excursions or spa packages throughout the week. than if you just put them in the, ni the nicest Butler room, like, because you're giving them more value for their money at that point, like you said, basically the whole point of this topic, both of you on this call, even myself, we've all gotten emails from TAs before where they've gone, Oh my God, this, this, this person spent, $10,000 more than they originally mm -hmm. did when we first started because you've built so much value and you've given them exactly what they want. People are going to pay for something if it's exactly what they want. Right. So it's, it's, it's in you, it's in everybody. Um, it's just kind of, once again, it's just kind of how you shift your, your personal mindset on how you approach uh, the sales is what's important. But I, I promise you, if you start forgetting about and worrying about closing everybody, and just worry about increasing your average sale, not only the average price, but the amount that you're getting out of every 10 quotes that you send out, you're going to notice your sales go through the roof. It's just it's just what history has done, right? And I, listen, like I said, I've been in sales my whole life. I've typically have always sold intangible items. If you want to know my career past, and what I've done, if you don't already know, feel free to follow me at Chad Kruger UVI, right? There is a plug for my social media channels on top of like following and sharing two BDMs and a mic. Um, but 
I, I my history has always been sales. Of ninety percent of it's been in the travel industry, um, but it's amazing. On once you really start analyzing the psychology behind how the dominant buying motives work and in in how the the sales process works, on how just tweaking a few little things that your 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 your, your sales are going to increase. Now, I know, Chad, that, that we're just trying to hit a couple of the main topics here, right? We're not diving into full, which sounds like we are diving into full details, but there's a lot more that goes into this. If, if an advisor wanted to learn more about specifically what you've been talking about on this, how would they get that information? Is there something that they can watch from you? Do you do a webinar, reach out to the local BDMs? What's your advice there? Local BDMs is always go to your BDM, right? Work, work with your local support. I have, I, I mean, like I said, I've, I've re- personally recorded this training before, um, you know, and just so it's something that, that people can utilize and play on a webinar type platform, but start with your local BDM and, and feel free to have them, you know, uh, reach out to me and then we can always put something together or, you know, share some recordings and just some different things that we've done in the past. But, um, you know, it's something that I always try to incorporate in quite a bit of the, the different, you know, events that we do, you know, in the Midwest and got no problem with, you know, sharing the love amongst, you know, the Northeast region and the Southeast and the West Western region as well too. So, um, but yeah, I always start with the BDM because listen, this is what we're here for. We're here to kind of help not, you know, not only, you know, listen, we're here to help grow sales, but also we have to be strategic sometimes in how we're actually growing those sales. It's not always more room count um, that that's going to get the benefit. Sometimes we just got to look at increasing that dollar amount. We, can um, we acknowledge Barb's comment here? Because she piggybacked off something you said. Barb Culberson says, I love it when the couples come in together. I always tell them she is worth it. She did put yeah, up I, with you for the last so many years. How can he say no? Barb, listen, Barb knows. Barb, that's my girl, right? Listen, Barb, she's she's been an agency owner for years, right? And But that's, that's, the, that's the truth, right? Listen, I, I don't, I mean, listen, you can looking right at the guy and just saying, I mean, she's worth it, isn't she? I mean, he's not going to say no, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, listen, it's, you have some fun with it. But listen, I, I think the best thing to do is, once again, you you, you paint the perfect picture. Um, and that's when, it, that's when, and it really holds too, because once you, once you get yourself away from being a dot com where anybody can go online and just book, book a vacation, right? There's a hotel, there's a flight, I'm done. That's not, that's not the people that we work with, right? We work with those people that really want to cultivate an experience that they're going to have for the rest of their lives. And, and that's what it's all about. So uh, that's, that's what we do. Chad, here's a great question for you as we start to wrap this up uh, from Tara. says, I'm so close to CRC and I need to push those last minute deals. What more can I do? Tara, I, I see a lot of the stuff that you do. You are all over social media, which is awesome. But once again, all you have to just keep going. Right. Don't 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 take your foot off the pedal. Um, There's still time left this year. Listen, we got availability. Right. You got there. People will travel last minute. Right. There's plenty of availability through even in September and in the quarter four. Now is the time to start shifting the messaging of, oh, what are we going to do next year and spring breaks? Like now is the time for Christmas, Thanksgiving. Um, Halloween, I will tell you, I've spent the past two years at Beaches Turks over Halloween. My kids could care less about trick-or-treating back home because they have a lot more fun uh, down Aww. on the beach and they still bring costumes and dress. Like, so it's it's just a different way to do things. I'm also in Minnesota and it's super cold uh, most of the time. Um, so we're <laughs> a bit more warm. But, no storm um, of 94. Yeah. Listen. It's, I, I don't understand. The weather here is just, it is what it is. But shift our mindset. Don't take your foot off the pedal. Keep pushing the promotions. Keep sending them out. Blast your clients. Um, make sure they're getting the newsletters. Make sure they're getting your communications. Tailor it to them. But listen, you, you're not going to bug them too much. And listen, if they unsubscribe from what you're sending, great. They weren't a good client in the first place. They want to know what promotions are available. They don't always know, know how to go find them, like especially right now with the different promotions that are there. This is why we get this stuff out to you guys to make sure that you're, we, we, listen, we rely on you to make sure that your clients are aware of what's happening. And, and once we do that, we'll, we'll see it. But Tara, I know you will hit that because that's been a goal of yours for, for, for quite some time now. I see it on social media. I see the pushes, but listen, it's, it's persistence is key and that's, what's going to get you to the top. Gary says, great advice. I've had a heck of a time filling more rooms for November 16 through 23. I guess it must be because it's around Thanksgiving time. 
could be. Listen, some people listen. Some people have their Thanksgiving traditions that that they don't want to break. I used to have one. Mine has also now evolved from just ordering all of my food and getting it catered. So I don't have to cook it. And I am now ready to go to the next level is just let the resorts cook it for me. Like I, this is the progression of my life. So, um, you know, we do have a lot of people that do choose to, you know, partake in that. But once again, I've got my, my entire family is thinking about, you know what, why do we keep going to grandma and grandpa's for, for Christmas? Like, why are we not somewhere out of this cold state, somewhere warm, you know, enjoying that. So I think once again, it's, it's us making sure that, that, that letting our clients know that, listen, it, it's an option, right? Might not all of a sudden hit right away, but you start planting those seeds every single year, you'll start getting some of those multi-gen groups booking that, you know, booking those four bedrooms in the grill um, or those four bedrooms in Turks. And listen, that's the gift that keeps on giving every Christmas. I tell hey, you. Perfect. Well, listen, Chad, it was great to have you on here. Advisors, if you have any more, uh, comments, questions, feel free to ask them as, as we wrap up and close out here. Um, Chad, it's always great to have you. Christy, any final thoughts or words or anything you want to say today? The cat is out of the bag now. And uh, to those that are listening, I am transferring to Colorado and Wyoming to be the business development manager out there. So I really thought this, that this would be the perfect time and place to really tell Chad on camera and it's recording how much I appreciated you, still appreciate you, will always appreciate you, how much I've learned from you. And I'm so thankful to have had you as my first director, and I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. But you cannot discard me yet. You still have me for a couple more weeks. And I'm really sad that I will not get the perks of Executive Platinum when I fly down to Miami anymore. <laughs> Yeah, listen, uh, I'm glad the cat's finally out of the bag because obviously we've known this transition is happening for quite some time. And, and, and one of the things I do love about this company is, is listen, as much as you'll be missed um, by all of your advisors in Minnesota and all of your advisors in North Dakota and on this team, I could not be more happy than for you to continue to go down your journey and, and see what it's all about. Um, you know, this is just the start for you, uh, both of you, actually, you know, you, you guys are two very up and coming, um, you know, mediums in this company. And the last thing I was going to do would be to, you know, stop that from happening. Um, you know, and just, just know that, you know, David Ridge will not be extending his executive platinum perks to you flying out of Colorado because he's not going to be on the same legs. And just so that, you know, um, your, your replacement, Sammy Scoo, we've already hired her. She's yep. already in play to be with her all week. Um, listen, she's, I already have our first ticket. I've already confirmed her, um, for all the upgrades for us heading down uh, to Jamaica on the next trip. So, um, you, you're, you're already, you're already in, in the back seat, I'm in the she's moved over, but, um, honestly, Colorado and Wyoming are lucky to have you. The Western region is lucky to have you, but more importantly, UVI is super uh, lucky to have you with us. So thank you for everything oh, you've done. I really forward. appreciate that. I'm saving, I'm saving the waterworks till about 345 when we're off of this. But Perfect. those who are listening, don't worry. Two BDMs and a mic is not changing. We will be in the same region now, but nothing is changing with two BDMs and a mic. So lucky for you guys. You still get to hear James and I every, every Monday. So there's more coming, not changing this part portion, but there definitely will be more coming in. And I guarantee that Chad will still be a big part of the future as, oh, as yeah. well, the other directors. But listen, not to break up the, the sappiness there a little bit, but all I heard from that whole thing is that the director that lives in your backyard extends his executive platinum yeah. privileges. <laughs> but I live in David Ridge's backyard and we fly together a lot. And I don't feel like... I've ever benefited from this and I'm trying so, to understand what is going on here. Yeah. So you might want to call him. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just how I take care of my peeps. But as, as an executive platinum member with American, I am able to add a companion to said flight. So a lot of times when we travel, we're either we're on different tickets, but we will travel the same legs to get to a destination. And there she is. She's right. She's at, she's, if I'm not, if I'm number one, she's number two on the upgrade list every single time. So. All I do is I text myself. I mean, you, hey, Chad, do you, are yeah. you on the same flight? Any I, she doesn't, I, I just know when there's a flight coming up, she just says, Hey, how are you? And I just say, send me your record locator. I'll get you added. And she goes, okay, thanks. Listen, the rest <laughs> of the team hate it. 
Mike Goldsby rips on her all the time. He's like, oh, you didn't get your upgrade this trip to Jeff with. Man, listen, but, in uh, five years, the, be- the five years, the best I get is David lets me come in in group one with him. <laughs> and you're worried about her not getting it while she's in Colorado. i on the same flights. Yeah. <gasps> listen, we, we, we'll have to save that for a whole new Because <laughs> um, we, we can go down, definitely down. But yeah, listen, it's an option. You might want to bump him and just say, hey, maybe, maybe throw me a bone every once in a while. Here. <laughs> Well, Chad, listen, it's been an honor to have you on the episode again. Lots of great information. Christy, I'm excited for your uh, transition. Uh, I do remember that when all this opportunity came up, you were very conflicted and it was very hard to to leave Chad. So David's definitely got some big shoes to fill. And uh, uh, But I think our team overall is going to be great. But uh, again, we strive here at Two Beams and a Mic to bring the four regions together. That's our goal. That's not going to change. So even though we're g- both going to be on the West, like Christy said, nothing is changing. We still want to keep the Northeast and Southeast involved. Look forward to more guests. In fact, I believe the next couple of advisors are going to be from those regions over the next couple of weeks. Correct, Christy? Yes, from the Southeast and the Northeast. So very so, excited perfect. for the next couple of weeks coming up here. So we'll continue this training series and helping you guys close out your business to finish out the year extremely strong. We will see you guys next Monday. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you again, Chad. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.